Here at Communication this week, there's a lot of talk about smart cities, but there's also been talk today about a smart nation, and I'm joined by Steve Tan from Singapore. Steve, tell us about the presentation that you gave, and tell us what it takes to become a smart nation. Yes, thank you, Brian. Well, essentially, I was talking about um, you know what it takes to be a smart nation, and when we talk about a smart nation, uh, it, in essence, it's trying to harness technology to be able to better the lives of its citizenry uh, in various aspects of, of you know, day-to-day uh, -day living. Um, and of course, um, you know, with technology, then lots of things could be done cheaper and more efficiently. Yeah, I mean, what are the challenges? Because there are so many converging technology at the moment. There's IoT, there's 5G, there's so much happening. You know, what are the challenges to make it a reality? Right. Well, in a smart nation, we've got this uh, uh, pervading concept of the Internet of Things ecosystem, right? In this ecosystem, there are multiple stakeholders at play because different stakeholders for different devices. And often one key challenge is dealing with the security of data. Um, another big aspect as well would be dealing with the ability of obtaining informed consent from an individual as to how his personal data could be utilized by the device manufacturers or the device owners. Yeah, I mean, data, again, is another one of those big topics. What's this position in Asia regarding kind of regulation of freedom of data? Right. Well, if we're talking about personal data um, uh, in this part of the world, in Southeast Asia, right, um, now, um, because at the end of, end of 2015, um, the ASEAN Economic Community was formed, um, one of the commitments under the AEC blueprint was we've got to have good cyber security law, e-commerce law, as well as data protection, right? So Singapore, Malaysia, as well as the Philippines have enacted <coughs> data protection law. Um, the other seven ASEAN countries have yet to do so, but they will probably be doing so in the next couple of years. So that's, that's a really good sign, isn't it, for the future? It is indeed, it is indeed. The only problem is, I foresee that unlike the uniformity that we see in the European Union, where you've got the EU directive and, and now the new General Data Protection Regulation, what we have in Southeast Asia, in ASEAN, would be actually, actually quite disparate, um, very independent data protection law. So it's going to be a challenge to also grapple with interpretation of, of each country's data protection law. Well, we'll see how it develops. Thank you very much for talking Thank to you, us. Brian.